Hey, we all know that people buy homes emotionally. And in order to best connect with our customers' emotions, we have to get to know their stories. And getting customers to share those stories with us takes a great deal of curiosity on your part. And that's why for the next three weeks, I'm going to hand the five-minute sales training over to our very own Ryan Taft, who knows quite a lot about how important curiosity is and how to get the story. Starting this week with the five critical buyer stories to win the sale. Have you ever noticed that when a friend or a family member tells you a story about something, you know, something happening in their life, that they tend to refeel those emotions from that story, kind of as if the story was happening all over again? It's happening again. Well, the reason that happens is because when we share stories, we do refeel them. And what's interesting is that people's emotions are hidden in their stories and not in their information. In my brand new book, Story Getter, I take a very deep dive on how you can uncover those emotions from your customer by leveraging what I would argue is the number one sales skill that you could and should develop. And that skill is curiosity. Did you say curious? So today on the 5-Minute Sales Training, I want to share with you the five customer stories that you should be curious about in the sales process. So let's dive right in. The very first story that you should be looking to get is the buyer's motivation story. You know, why are they there? You know what people don't do on a Saturday morning when they're trying to figure out what to do with their day off? They don't say this, hey, hun, uh, you want to go to brunch? No, I got an idea. Why don't we go see a movie? Oh, that's an awful idea. How about this? Why don't we go shopping? Are you kidding? That sounds terrible. I've got it. Let's go have an awkward conversation with a salesperson. Oh, yes, I've always wanted to go do that. Yeah, that is not, <laughs> that is not how that goes. How does it go? You see, they didn't just wake up one day and decide to come visit you. Something has happened. Their rent went up. Maybe there was a break-in in the neighborhood. Someone finally got the promotion they were hoping for. The kids moved out. Yay. The parents moved in. <laughs> Uh, there's a story behind all of it. That is the very first story you want to get, is the motivation story. Now, the second one is what I call the dissatisfaction story. Now, this is asking what's wrong right now. Now, we know no home is perfect, and there's always something that bugs people about their home or maybe their neighborhood. In other words, there goes the neighborhood. But here's the thing. There are stories in all of those dissatisfactions. It's not just that the closet's too small. You want to know that last Thursday morning, your buyer, they had to run to the spare bedroom. They had to get into that closet to find the one belt that matched the outfit that was in the other closet. And on the way down the stairs, they almost fell. And that's the story of why the closet is too small. Again, the current dissatisfaction stories are arguably endless. The third story that you want to get is the current happiness story. Now, this is the what's right story, right? Sometimes we make this assumption that the home they're moving with completely sucks. And in some cases that might be true, but often there are aspects or features in the home they live in right now that they actually like and maybe even love. So similar to getting the story of the sucky closet, there's a, probably a story about the things that are working. So for example, I absolutely love my media room. If you asked me to share the story behind it, you would find that uh, it's the place I go to basically shut my brain off, which is often needed for me. My brain is completely shutting down. So find out what is working. What do they want to duplicate? Now, the fourth story is the future promise story. And this is the, the, what do they want to improve? You know, we're so used to asking this question that says, what are you looking for in your next home? And that typically leads to a list of features. But without getting the story behind it, really, it's like we're taking an order at a fast food restaurant. Now, to get the story, instead of just asking, what do you want? You want to ask questions like, well, well paint a picture for me. How are you going to be using that backyard? What is the first movie you and the family will be watching in that new media room? Share with me, where will they be? What will they be doing when you host your first dinner party, right? You want to get the characters and you want to get the scene, the story behind that. Now, the fifth story, and I could do a whole book just on this one alone, is the objection story. You see, objections is about imagination. What are they imagining going wrong? Often, objections are not really understood on an emotional level, and I believe that objections live in the buyer's imagination. So as they're trying to see their life play out in your home and your neighborhood, something isn't clicking. They visualize something not working. It could be 
that they see the amount of cabinets that you have and visualize having to put their expensive china in boxes instead of cabinets because there's not enough. Or maybe they have to go in the garage. Or they see the size of the backyard and imagine their dog needing more space to run, which means they're imagining having to go walk that dog every day. You see, there's an imagined story in that. People want to know the stories behind the stories. It's not the size of the yard or the amount of cabinets. That's the objection. It's the story behind how those things will affect their life in the future. It's a future story. Your job is to get that imagined story on the emotional level. And to do that, like I said, put them into the future and have them describe what they think will happen. All right, so there you have it. Those are the five stories that we're looking for. Five specific stories that your curiosity should be looking out for. And when you uncover those stories, you're going to move away from being what I call an information getter and into a true story getter. Thanks, Ryan. And thank you for watching today's 5-Minute Sales Training. Don't forget to like and subscribe to let YouTube know that this is the kind of content that you want. And if you haven't done so yet, go place your pre-order for Ryan's new book, Story Getter, at shop.jeffshore.com. Order today at the pre-sale price and receive it when it launches in October. Until next time, my friends, learn more to earn more. <laughs>